Hi, uh, again, this is Steve Gladys coming to you from George Mason University's Enterprise Center here in Fairfax, Virginia, and for Steve Gladys Leadership Partners. Um, uh, we've been talking about the Agile Leader and how, it, how you have to be able to be flexible, you have to be trusted, you have to be, you have to be real flexible about the way you, especially the way you enter a new job and a new situation, uh, and that sort of power seesaw that we talked about. Finally, we're going to talk about how you have tough talks. Um, and invariably, in any relationship, I don't care what the relationship is, you have to have a difficult conversation or a tough talk with somebody, right? Just because something happens that triggers that, and the longer you don't have that difficult conversation, that tough talk with people, the worse things get. And we've got a, a simple sort of memory game to help you remember this. And the reason most people don't have tough talks with other people is they're afraid the relationship will blow up. And in fact, it almost never does if you do this thing right. Um, if you have the conversation. I remember uh, I, got a, I was working with an executive who, who was supposed to have a co difficult conversation. It took him a few months to sort of get it going. He just didn't want to have this difficult conversation. He finally did and called me up and he said, you know, you won't believe what happened. And of course, in the back of my mind, I, I sort of said to myself, yeah, if you did it right, I, I, I won't believe what you said. I, I do know what's going to happen or what did happen. And he said, yeah, in fact, the, the guy responded really well. Oftentimes, when you have these tough talks, people, it resets the relationship, it gets the, it gets the unspoken words and the unspoken thoughts and the unspoken emotions out on the surface that you can really deal with them. So let's talk about the steps. The first is name it. First thing you have to do in a tough talk is actually name the problem. So you might say, um, you, might, you, might, uh, you might sit down with the person you're talking about and say, I want to talk to you about the way you've been treating me in, in staff meetings. So say something, maybe you're sitting down with your supervisor and say, you know, I want to talk with the way you've been treating me in staff meetings. Um, I, um, it's been very difficult for me, um, especially when you, you, use, you call me names. Um, the second thing you might do is frame it. So at this point, at this point so you first, first want to name what it is, that you're upset that this person has, has, has used, you know, sort of negative names in, in public settings. Tell them what it is you're upset about. The second is to frame it. You want to give them an example. You want to give them an example, something that they can, that they can, they can relate back to. So you might say, that in the last meeting that we had, um, you, you said I was an idiot to be to think that such and such was going to happen before we had the, the, the uh, things in place in the office. You know, I didn't really appreciate that, and you've said it to me several times. And you might give one or more example. I wouldn't give five examples. I'd give one or two examples to help the person frame what you mean that you're, when you when you say you're upset. Um, what specifically is it that you're upset about? Could you, in giving them one example really helps them understand it. The next thing you want to do is game it. Um, and when we say game it, what we're talking about is the idea of the idea of of admitting that somehow or other you have a, a you played a role in this whole thing. Well, one of the one of the things that you want to do to reduce anxiety on the other person's part is to give yourself a role. You want them to save a little bit of face, and the way you do that is to say, you know. Um, I should have told you about this sooner, but I didn't, or I'm at fault too for sometimes blurting out meetings. So you want to take some, some uh, responsibility, if you will, for, the, for this whole problem that's between the two of you. Then you want to say it. You want to then say, yeah, but you know, you've, you've got a responsibility in this, this too, and I want, I want us to be clear that I've, got, I've done some things wrong, as have you, and I want to clear it up, and that's when you, that's when you came it. You say, listen, I, I think we can get through this if we work on this together. How about, how about it? What do you think is going on? What do, your, what, do your, what do you think should happen now? And sort of leave it open to that person to make comments. Now they might be a little upset in the beginning, and you want to just listen and not be responsive and not respond to their, the, them other than to ask them questions to clarify their response. Typically people, after they've had a chance to talk, will kind of clarify, and then you have a, a, a pretty good discussion. The one thing you don't want to do throughout the whole process, you don't want to blame it. You want to say it's all your problem, it's all your fault. It's really something, it's, a, it's something that's grown up between us that we need to talk about and we need to get out in the open. I'll guarantee you that if you have one of these, if you read the book for, the, for more detail, obviously this has been a quick overview, but if you read the book, I think you'll, see, you'll think you'll see how to do this and if you try it first on a safe audience in the beginning and then a more difficult one as you go down, as you go down the road, you'll get better and better at doing these things. This has been Steve Gladys from George Mason University's Mason Enterprise Center talking about the Agile Leader and the, four things that, the three or four things that you can do to become a, a more Agile Leader and a more successful leader. Thanks very much and we appreciate your paying attention. Take care.